Good morning. It's Thursday, March 18th. Oh, found my video and I know I got to turn my volume down. All right. This is good. This popped right up. So say hi when you get here. Um, if you're live, if you're watching on YouTube, please, or watch it on Facebook later, either one, just say um, hashtag replay. Uh, just a reminder, if you are on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button that is down in the corner and then the little bell um, to set your notifications so you'll know when I'm here. Um, good morning, Julie. So that's that. Say hi uh, if you're here now or later. Um, normally, so my name is Tony Tesler and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Hi, Sean. What are you doing home, Sean? This is awesome. Is today a holiday and I didn't realize it? Hmm. Either way, I'm happy you're here. Um, so normally, like I said, I'm Tony Tesler. If there's anything I can help you with, you just let me know. Normally I would do mail first and I would show you guys what mail I've gotten this week. And wah, wah, I didn't get any mail this week. So what I have to show you is a couple of cards that um, I worked on with a group of girls last Saturday. And um, so we've been doing through uh, Facebook rooms, like every month we get together and I try to come up with a plan or a paper. Oh, sick. Boo, Sean. I hope you're not sick for long. Well, maybe this will brighten your day a little bit. Um, so yeah, the group of girls, I send out like a cutting template, like um, a pattern or a technique that we can all do with, you know, whatever supplies we have at home since we're separate. So this last one, um, and I'm going to post this on my blog in the next week, hopefully this weekend. I didn't get time this earlier this week, um, but I sent them a pattern to cut four pieces of designer paper and then you mix match them all together and create cards so you can see like all this size is the same this size is the same so you cut one piece you know four different pieces up the same way then just change stuff around and then add your little doodads um, so these were papers from last year I think they were called uh, garden impressions or something impressions. I don't know. Um, but I like them. I like the bright colors. So I decided I wanted to do Easter cards. And, um, this Easter guy, this little bunny is actually from the current set. It's called, um, nature's walk. And thanks Julie. It's got like a deer and some wintry looking trees, but any bunny you have or anything, you know, you can use whatever. So this is just the pattern. Um, my first prototype was with these papers that I got from Unity, uh, and they were just four random papers, but they seemed to go nicely. And this time I did some landscape and some portrait, but you see how the paper layout, the sizes, like the pieces, they, they go in like a puzzle. Those are all the same, no matter what, whether they're landscape or, or portrait. Um, but then I paired this with our dragonfly garden uh, because for some reason like the this was mint macaron and I stamped them in early espresso let me see if that's close enough mint macaron and misty moonlight and that seemed to to go nicely so that was a fun um, I forget what we would call it like kind of like a one sheet wonder but it's more of just a paper cutting like a a guide that you use to pattern. I don't know. The word's not coming to me right now, but you know what I mean? All right. So that is that for our mail. Um, I want to remind you of bingo. They do go good together and it's fun to pick like pieces from the same pack, you know, because then the colors coordinate and you know, color coordination really makes or breaks things, I think. Um, but reminder bingo, um, I need RSVPs in two weeks, so that's April 1st, which hard to believe that is April 1st is already going to be here. Um, I just need a few more people. So I like to have at least 10 just so we it makes it fun for everybody. Um, so please, if you're interested, let me know. That event is created on my 
think it's off of my page. Um, I will have to add a link somewhere so that people know about it. Um, but check that out. The big news from yesterday, uh, that butterfly bijou paper. Let me just reach down and get it. This stuff, this sold out yesterday. And I think it was because of the free shipping that we had. And that, you know, they told us this was limited time anyway. Um, and they really meant it this time. So there is no indication at all that they're getting any more in. Um, it's not on the back order list. It's not on like the not orderable, uh, nothing. So as far as I can tell, it's gone. Um, and that really only lasted, what are we in the second? No, we're in the third week of March. So yeah, that only lasted three weeks. Unfortunate, but if you got some, you got some. So good. All right, one sip of coffee. And then we're gonna jump into it. Um, so today I wanted to talk with you about uh, designer paper, cutting it up, how to get the most out of it for what you want to make. And uh, the most thing that I make is cards these days. I still like to, you know, dabble in my scrapbooking. Um, I've been doing more of the mini albums though. Like not, I haven't really been making 12 by 12 layouts. I haven't done that in a long time, um, but it's still on the list. So anyway, let me get this. I want to use the butterfly, I mean not butterfly, Hydrangea Haven Suite, and I haven't even opened this up, Hydrangea Hill. Um, but I've seen, you know, everybody's been doing stuff with this. Let me get this out. So I already cut my card bases. We're going to be using um, Rococo Rose and Highland Heather today because um, these colors come right from the papers. And then I'm adding in, um, I haven't really figured out which greetings I'm going to use, but I'm going to go with some of these. Happy Thoughts and a touch of ink. I know this is from Celebration and you can't get it anymore, but um, I love these greetings. So we're going to use it. And then of course I've got the hydrangea set that goes with this. Um, we'll see that part, the greeting part, that's not really key for today. It's more of the designer paper and how we can cut it up efficiently. All right, let's get some scissors in here. And I kind of have to um, keep watch on my phone because it was only down to 30% but I can either plug in my microphone or the phone cord. Hi, Marvick. Um, I can't have both plugged in and that is unfortunate. So I gotta just keep an eye on if I get like a low battery thing, I'm gonna have to unplug my microphone and give it some juice, but we'll see. All right, so Hydrangea Haven. I already picked out which papers I wanted to use, um, but let's just go through them. So this is Rococo Rose. Oh, and that's the paper I'm going to use. And actually, I'm going to do both of them. And I'll come back to that. Um, but just to give you a look at the colors, these are, I think it's Gorgeous Grape and Highland Heather both. Gorgeous Grape, Highland Heather, Misty Moonlight, Mossy Meadow, Old Olive, Rococo Rose, which is a retiring color. And by the way, the cardstock is running very low on that. Um, Seaside Spray, that cardstock is back ordered right now, and white. Um, so this must be, this looks more like Gorgeous Grape. Mmm, I love these together. I wish they had had like a pink hydrangea, like how they come in blue, purple, and pink. That Seaside Spray. This is nice for like um, hand cutting, I believe. You know, that's what I would use it for. Or maybe put a die, like a circle die right over that. Whatever you can fit. I think hand cutting would probably be it. Ooh, I like these. The blue and pink, or blue and purple. This again, I might hand cut some out. Um, but I really like this side. Stripes, you can't go wrong with stripes. And this, I'm actually gonna use this one today too. Um, that's that Rococo Rose. Ooh, and this, I love a good plaid. Man, they make it hard to choose because uh, I love these. Now, I got this whole set because my mom loves hydrangeas. And um, actually, all the cards that I make today, I'm just going to give to her. 
and she will use them and love them just like she loves me 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 all right so let's look at this first one that we're going to work with so this pattern in particular it goes perfectly for card making because we've got the the two strips of you know we've got the pattern up here and down here so what we want is our card bases you can make them um, landscape but for now for this purpose all my cards are going to be portrait all right and the measurements since this is 12 by 12 um, let me get a little do a little math here so 12 by 12 let's just say this is 12 by 12 our cardstock layers are normally a normal layer um, well a normal base is four and a quarter by five and a half so the easiest the next easiest layer down is four by five and a quarter like that gives you a nice a nice quarter inch border I like that for like that initial card layer so four this is 12 so we divide it that goes three times so we'll be able to get four three groups of four and then our five and a quarter will be like we'll cut it down do 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 five and a quarter and then again five and a quarter so this is the most efficient way to cut your designer series paper for card making if you want more of a whole a full card layer to be to focus on your designer paper and then we'll get into um, the next one I'll cut them smaller um, but so this one I'm actually gonna cut five and a quarter first because this is how I would normally cut it five and a quarter and then five and a quarter and then I would throw this little strip away on this particular pattern though I want to throw away like from the middle so I want to cut here five and a quarter and here five and a quarter all right and I wouldn't I didn't do all this cutting ahead of time because I wanted you to see like how it really is quite easy all right five and a quarter and man that's just pretty mmm and then five and a quarter again now this um I could save this you know I could do something with that I won't say that I will I won't throw it away right now but I'm not really inclined to keep little strips all right and now we'll just go four and four now I have in the past tried to make things quicker and easier on myself and I thought if I'm just gonna cut everything at four why don't I just start at eight and then go eight and then four um, for some reason all the pieces don't add up the same they they don't end up being the same width so I just go four every time if it was something that I wasn't too concerned about being precise then I might do that you know eight and then slide it over to four um, but I want them all the same all right so this is gonna be our card base because I mean this makes a beautiful card base let's bring in some more so I've got my card bases covered or cut and scored um, and I'm gonna do one with the gorgeous grape and then also with the rococo rose but I'm gonna do slightly different all right let's fold these and this is just the um, it's eight and a half by five and a half and then scored in half or five and a half by eight and a half however you want to say it all right so back to a card layer so layering these just the designer paper straight on the card that is a perfectly acceptable card perfectly beautiful I like it nice like especially love this for some reason this purple really um, stands out more so I'm gonna tape one on and then I'm gonna add um, like a greeting and, and all that but 
now I want to show you a little something different. So once you have your four by five and a quarter piece, what if we want to add a little white layer to this? Because I think sometimes that makes it, um, it makes it stand out more. So, oops. All right, time out. I hit my camera. I think I have to move. Let me wait for this to catch up a minute and uh, see if I moved it back in the right spot. Man, I really knocked it. Okay, mm, I think that's good. All right, we're gonna go with it. Okay, Phew, pay attention, Tony. So I do still like the five and a quarter by four layer as like our first layer. So I'm gonna cut this white. Um, and I just realized I already pre-cut all these white pieces. Oh well. Um, now we can't have a five and a quarter by four. We can't have two layers the same. So I will go back and trim this down and I'm going to take an eighth inch off. So it's going to be five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. <coughs> but I always start cutting those. Like if I'm going to cut a whole piece of designer series paper up, I do cut them all like this at the same time, four by five and a quarter, and you get six pieces. Okay, so now I have four left, and I'm gonna make other cards for my mom, um, but let's just tape this on. Sometimes a little border just adds a, a little something extra to it. It makes it pop up a little. And I can tell something wasn't quite right. See how that's uh, a little thicker there? Got to take care of that. Thanks, Sean. I love this guillotine cutter because I can really eyeball and um, get some really thin slices cut off of there. Okay. And actually, my, oops papers are in the way. All right. Now with this, so let's look at both of them again. Still both perfectly lovely cards. The white really makes it um, pop out more, but I'm going to go ahead and glue this down because I kind of want to keep these simple. Um, since the a lot of times I do like to make a full card with just the designer series paper and then just have a greeting because I want that pretty paper to be the focal point. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to stamp a greeting. Hold this glue down for a minute. I'm going to have a greeting here, like front and center. And um, then I'm going to add some of the pastels that I'm so glad we can finally get these. They went out of stock like very quickly. These came out in January and um, we were really just able to finally get them again maybe a couple weeks ago. Um, pastel pearls, but these are part of the hydrangea suite. And we've got um, Rococo Rose, the Highland Heather, Seaside Spray, and Gorgeous Grape. So um, now these two are the ink colors that are going away. Seaside Spray and Rococo Rose. All right, let's stamp something uh, and punch it out. And I'm going to use the, I think mostly the double oval punch. And I am going to do uh, white on white for those layers. Let's do, hmm, let's do a thinking of you for right now. Oh no, wait, that's too big. I need thinking of you from the touch of ink set because that one fits hello friend works too thinking of you yep okay and I already got my ink pads out so let's get this on and oh uh, yep all right my low battery mode is on so 
Okay, unfortunately, I have to unplug my microphone, and um, I hope you guys are still going to be able to hear me. Let's plug this in, get this cord out of the way. Okay, get this out of the way. Um, so tell me, do I need to talk louder? Um, is it still, can you hear me? Like, is there a big difference without the microphone? Because if I, I can try to talk louder if I need to. Uh, all right, let's stamp. Both of these are gonna be thinking of you. So I'll start with Rococo Rose. And I never got the full size ink pad of this. I just have the spot. And I think I got this in a paper pumpkin kit. Um, so that's that. Those paper pumpkin kits are awesome for the little ink pads. All right, thinking of you, and I don't have my chamois. So I just saw on a different um, a website or you know somebody's video or whatever. Apparently, they recommend louder would help. Okay, Sean, thank you. Um, they rec somebody recommended that cleaning all your um, photopolymers with the chamois versus the spray and the scrub. And I didn't realize that. Like, we've had that chamois for, I don't know how long, um, and the photopolymer stamps, but I never realized that one method was better than the other for cleaning them. So, I really have to get in the habit of using my chamois more, because uh, I just don't, that's not my first choice for a cleaner. All right, so let's punch this. And I am punching both. So I just want to line up the thinking of you and then slide it over. And I can tell um, this part's going to get cut off, but I'm really lining this part up. So this one I'll throw away and then I'll just punch another one right here. All right. And then I like to get rid of this extra. And then we're going to tape these on. Well, I should say, let me use a little bit of glue and then I'm going to pop them up with some dimensionals and add our pearls. Oops. Okay. Oh. That got away from me. Whoa. I'm lucky that landed up. All right, I really like this white on white layering, especially for greetings. Um, I don't know why. Hey, where'd that glue come from? Um, I don't know why, but I think it just pops sometimes. All right, of course my ugh, my adhesive remover is behind where I had this all set up. You know, it's always something. I need to get this up because that's gonna stick on my, whatever I do later. Invariably, it will go right on there. All right, let's grab some dimensionals. Like I said, I'm just gonna put these like right in the middle. Hmm, so purple and purple, rose on rose, or no. I could mix them up, but nah. All right, so I do want this in the center-ish for both. Yeah, I like it. Because, yeah, I really want this paper, this pattern down here, to be the focus. Um, but now we can add, let's do some pink ones. I'm going to do the pink and actually the blues. Because that's going to go, because, you know, it pulls in from that blue. And then this blue background. All right, and then here I will do two blues and a pink. 
and there I'm trying to just keep them kind of the same similar but different colors mmm I like those you know I could add a little ribbon um, but I like it just like that because like I said this paper really stays front and center all right so that and I will do the same with these cards let me grab these up so these other four pieces that I have left I'm gonna make a similar layout card with these so that is a good way to get the most out of you know if you're trying to make full size background cards all right so you cut those four by five and a quarter now let's say you need more pieces so you're not necessarily planning on um, using it as the the full background layer the next size down that is a good number and I'm still gonna use these this pieces because I want to um, I still want to focus on this, uh, these hydrangeas. Hmm. And I just realized I'm going to get more of this, but that's okay. All right. The next size down is three by four. So we'll make a three by four piece is going to be about this big. And that's just going to be a smaller layer to set in the middle of your card. Now the beauty about three by four is we'll cut it four inches four inches four inches just because uh, the way this pattern's going and then we'll go three 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 so we'll get 12 layering pieces out of this one piece of paper now this part I'm gonna have to figure out something else to do with that um, later because I'm just focused on these hydrangea rows still so let me go ahead and let me draw that out first So, so let me write this down four by five and a quarter pieces and then this I'll write three by four pieces and we'll get six of those and we'll get 12 of these so this part will go four and four and then these are all three so three six nine twelve three 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 so they're all threes um, but do you see how you get more pieces they're smaller but they would be like an accent piece or something for whatever card you're making this comes in handy um, if you're doing swaps or if you're making um, like if you want to make your Christmas cards and you want a whole batch to be the same and you only have one piece of paper that you really want to use so this will help you get the most out of that all right, so we'll cut it. So I'm gonna start with my four again, and I'm cutting it this way because I want all these hydrangeas in there. Four, four, and then this one should be four. Yep. All right, now like I said, if this was a full pattern, um, this would be, this would have something on it other than clouds. So I'm gonna have to do something with that later. That's not gonna be the focus of today. Um, so let's do this three and three and three. And actually you get the idea. So I'm not gonna sit here and cut all of those So we've got all these pieces that are three by four. Now again, these will be perfectly acceptable to layer right on the front of a card. Let's bring in, and again, I'm gonna do a Rococo Rose and a um, Highland Heather. All right, where, I know I had other pieces cut. Where are my layering bits? All right, you know, I just had them right in front of my face. Let me fold these and maybe it will, they will appear. Oh, it's hiding. See, it doesn't help when I put white on top of stuff and you know, then I can't see any of this goodness underneath. 
right, I cut these white pieces so that I would have them to put on the insides of my cards, which I already forgot to do on the other two. Wah, wah. All right. So again, this would be a perfectly acceptable layer to add just like that. But I like it, you know, again, I want to put a little piece of white behind it. So I've cut two pieces of white, two different sizes. These are designer series paper pieces are both three by four. So I like to add an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch. And that's what I've got different here. So I don't know if you can tell, but see how they're, it's very, it's a very teeny tiny difference. So we'll do one, the larger and one, the eighth. Eighth inch is just, um, I mean, it's smaller. Uh, I like them for different, different purposes. Let me see. Oh no, wait, this was probably the bigger one. It looks smaller unless I grab the wrong Nope, an eighth inch really is bigger. Okay, or bigger than I thought. I think I'm thinking of like a smidge, like a 16th or something that would be very teeny tiny. And I know this is hard for you guys to see white on this white. Um, it's hard for me too. But can you barely see the difference? And of course I didn't get this one right in the middle. So I'm going to have to trim that up because that is going to bother me. I can't have something that off and give it to my mom to use. I don't want her friends thinking I'm a slacker. Okay. So again, um, the plan is to just add a greeting and this time I'm probably going to add the greeting down here. So this is again, perfectly lovely. However, um, let's step it up a notch. So how about we add an embossed background? So adding an embossed background, this really just adding all this texture, it really just brings it up a notch. So I'm going to use, this is the, um, tasteful textiles. I think those are always tongue twisters. So I'm going to do that one with the Rococo Rose, and then I'm going to do the tin tile folder with the the Highland Heather. I really want this to stick down more. So even though you just have this little bitty piece of designer series paper, like you can really jazz up your card by adding layers. And I think that's the best of both worlds. We're getting the most that we can out of our designer series paper or pattern paper, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're getting the most out of that. And then we're adding a little zhuzh to it. So, mm, see, I really like that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Hey, Cindy Norcus, how are you? You've been busy. I, I see your videos. That's awesome. All right, so gluing this down. And now for these, I'm going to pop these up with um, dimensionals, these layers, just because I want them to really stick up a little bit more. And I'm going uh, with a lot because I don't want any saggy bits. And I may have to grab another pack, but that's okay. Yeah, when the weather's nicer, Cindy, we got to have another um, cookout somewhere, uh, maybe somewhere closer, like halfway. Maybe we can get Teddy to do it again. All right, now I'm just putting this, I'm trying to get this in the middle. I'm good with that. All right, and I'm just going to cut these because, you know, you got to use all your pieces around this whole deal. Oops. All right. Oops, now they're sticking all over me. So I just realized um, in two weeks, this will be, two weeks will be 
a year since I finally jumped on the, the video thing and started making these. So I might have to do something special. Um, but I think that's going to coincide with my retirement workshop. Since the retirement list is coming out earlier this year. Um, you know, it's coming out next week, actually. And uh, that's when things really go, like, while supplies last and all. All that. All right, let's get this down. Okay. Mmm, I like it. Actually, I might do the greeting over here on this one and then maybe down here on that one. All right, so where is the scrap that I was doing? Um, so this one I'm going to do Hello Friend. Just because um, I think my mom can use those too. And I'm going to do the same uh, idea. I'm just going to do the white on white with the... Uh, the double oval punch. So let's get our Hello Friend inked up. Rococo Rose. And then I'm going to use the Highland Heather. And you know what? I just realized I had another size of cardstock or of designer paper that we can cut too that I did not write down. Um, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. All right, so we'll cut these. And again, I'm just eyeballing the Hello Fun part. I want that to be in the middle. And try to get it straight ish. This out of the way and we'll glue these down and I gotta check the time because I have a webinar at 1 but we are good on time so this next one I'm going to show you the cutting and how you could put that together on a card. Um, but I'll follow up with a picture of that later. Like I'll just give you the, you know, the measurements and stuff and show you how it would look. And actually I can, I can use my other, I know what I mean. I know that sounds like a crazy person talking. Um, actually, you know what, let's put it right here, here and here. And since this has already popped up, I'm just gonna glue these, the greeting pieces down. And I do want it to hang over a little bit over here. I think that's good. I'm just gonna hold that there for a minute. Hey, Diane, I'm glad you're here. That's too bad you had a, um, you're out chopping vines, Gail. We had, yeah, one of our neighbors, they were out clearing the stuff last week, um, vines and stuff across the street. Yeah, Di, you'll um, catch the replay. Um, but you probably realize about the cutting the paper and stuff, but it's worth looking at, right? All right, let me hold this down. I feel like I might need a dimensional under this edge because it's really, I, I just need to hold the glue down. It's wanting to pop up. Gail, you're pooped and sweaty. That's no good. It's early yet. But geez, it's probably 80 degrees already down there in Florida, right? I mean by noon. Ugh. All right. That is, I'm liking it. Good enough. All right, let's so bring in some of our pastel pearls. Again, just because um, I want to use them since we finally have them. I'm going to put that one there. And I kind of want one here. This is like a lot of pink going on here. Let's go back to another blue one too, just to mix it up a little bit. Mm. I kind of shouldn't have put that one there. I'm going to move it. Sometimes you can grab these up and then move them again. I want this closer and then this one down here 
Sometimes once you put them down, that's it. All right, I'm not entirely happy with that, uh, but I'm just gonna let it go. All right, so I'm gonna put a blue one here. And this one really needs a purple one too. So we'll do purple here and then another purple one. Um, actually, let's go, I don't really wanna go right here. Right here. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna leave it. So this is a way you can get more cards out of a three by four piece, all right? So and just for those that missed it, this is my diagrams, my pictures of getting the most out of your 12 by 12. You can get six pieces, four by five and a quarter, or you can get 12 pieces, three by four. Um, now, since I do have some pieces that are already cut four inch wide, um, actually this is gonna work out perfect. So this other piece that I cut, this is a four inch strip. The other measurement, and I don't know, I don't think I'm gonna have room. Let me just draw it here, is four by four pieces. And you can get nine of those, all right? And that's just four. So you get three, you know, four, 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 and four, four, four. So a four by four piece, um, again, this is good if you are, hey Cindy, oh, it's chilly in Texas, wow. Um, a four by four piece is good if you're doing uh, multiples of something. So think of, you know, if you wanna make Christmas cards or a lot of birthday cards or swaps, if you're, you know, trying to make a bunch for something. <clears throat> so I'm actually gonna use this side of the paper. This was already cut four inches wide. So now I'm just gonna do four, four, four. And I have made cards like this before. Hey, Sue. So let me just show you. And like I said, I'm not gonna put this together entirely because um, I don't have time. I wanna get to the last project that has um, actually nothing to do. Well, it's somewhat. Actually, that's where I use the four by four pieces too, duh. All right, but this layout, I would do this. And I'm gonna put this on the bottom. I would use an embossed background and this layer is four by five and a quarter so that you have some pattern and texture on the, the back of your car, you know, or the base, whatever. So let's start with that and hold it down. I use this style um, for mostly when I do swaps because I would have like, you know, you get two pieces in the same print in each pack. So if you use this pattern to get the nine by nine pieces, you could do 18 swaps. And generally, it seems like when I get in swaps, like I always have, it's like 16 or something. So this works out well. All right, four by four. And I don't think I got this quite centered, but that's okay. Um, now normally, I may even put like a little strip of some contrasting color there so it really stands out, um, but you get the idea. Then you just would have something here. But this is a way to use your four by four pieces on a card. And you could have this like down here or up here so only the embossed part is hanging on one side. but you get the idea. All right, and now, so the next thing that I wanted to show you, also four by four, actually that was um, for this piece. So let's start with the base of this. Actually, I need a sip of coffee. And for you, those of you that came later, um, I had to unplug my microphone because my battery was dying. So um, if I'm not loud enough, please tell me. Sean told me earlier I could be a little louder. Um, so I'm trying to do that. All right, so I'm gonna use this piece. And this one, I'm gonna make a little basket. So this isn't a card, this is just a 3D thing. Um, I haven't made one of these in years, but I like them. Um, and Easter's coming up, this might be a good thing. 
So you take a 12 by 12 piece of paper. <coughs> mm, sorry. And I like to, um, I use this scoring board. I like it because, you know, we push everything up to the corner. Score it at four and eight. All right. And then turn it and score it at four and eight. All right. Now that is all the scoring for now. Um, what I want to do, all right, let's fold these. So whenever I score something, like I scored it, then I fold into the score. All right, so this is, I'm gonna fold them around and there's not gonna be any cutting for this. And fold this. Di, you might remember these baskets. We made these a long time ago. Now I want each corner to come in like this. All right, and to make a, um, I want to fold it like this. All right, so I'm doing side, corner to corner, and I want it to be like that. All right, so I'm pushing this in, and what I really want is, oops, I feel like I'm not giving you a good sh angle. We want this corner to be the nice corner, but I want this part to bring it over here and then squeeze, squeeze this part to make it flat, all right? And then I will take my bone folder in there. Now I think years ago when I made these, like I got out the, uh, the ruler and the scoring and all that, and it's just unnecessary, you know? This we can just squeeze in until those touch. You know, this doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't going in a museum or anything. This is just gonna get some candy put in it. Maybe, I don't even know yet. Um, actually, depending on who I give this to, there will not be any candy. We'll see, all right. And then I'm squeezing this down with the bone folder, all right. So 12 by 12, so this basket, it comes together like this, all right? I mean, that's a nice, cute little basket. I don't know if you can see from the sides. Um, now I have to punch some holes. And this is, um, whatever size hole punch you have, this isn't the regular size. This might be a eighth of an inch. So we wanna grab each pointy bit and just punch a hole like kind of near the top. You don't want to go too close to the top because you don't want to risk um, ripping through it. You know, we're going to just drag some ribbon through here. It's not like we're going to pull it that tight, but you never know. Some of you guys are strong or girls, people. All right. So there's, that's that. Let me get all these little bits out. Oh, now I want to bring in my designer paper because, all right, so I'm going to run ribbon through the top and tie it. And this looks good enough, um, but I want to doll up these sides a little, you know, I don't want them to be so plain Jane. So I'm going to start by cutting four by four pieces out of this, knowing that I'm going to trim them down um, because each one of those side panels on that box is four by four. But since I have to cut, I'm going to get three pieces here and I need another piece here. Four. Oops, how did that get? That looks like that got crooked. <coughs> All right, that's four. So I have these pieces that are four inches that I will do something else with. All right, but now let's go back to our basket. Each square on here, each side is four by four. So I really wanna trim this down just a little bit. So I'm gonna go three and seven eighths. But I started at four. Yeah, you're right, Diane. I won't see it from an airplane. I started at four just because I wanna keep the paper consistent and I wanna leave the rest of it still usable. 
So that's why I cut this at four first and then I'm going back to cut these particular pieces down to three and seven eighths. Now you could do a lot of dolling up on this little basket. Um, you know, you could add a tag, um, you could stamp stuff on this, like make it really tart it up. Um, but I am just going to glue these down. <clears throat> I think where I would get fancy on this is <clears throat> adding a tag. All right, but for now, I'm just focusing on making the basket so you guys can see. All right, so three and seven eighths, that really is tiny. I could have gone down even to three and three quarters if I wanted a, a bigger border. Um, but I like this. I like that it covers up most of this panel um, because then we can still see the, the Rococo rose in the side pieces. All right. Now I am using glue on this because the glue holds better long term. Um, I do still have some of these baskets that I made psh, maybe over 15 years ago, maybe 18 years ago. Um, and the panels, I just used tape and that's when I was using the mono adhesive for everything. Um, and they don't necessarily stay stuck together. All right, so let me hold this down and actually um, I'll look at my list because I do have a list of what I want to remind everybody of. <laughs> mm, I completely forgot. I had a notebook that I was going to give away today for everybody that like um, comments and shares. So ugh, I have to go grab that. So, you know, I am trying to clean stuff out. Um, I found a cool brand new notebook that I had designed with my digital studio, which was Stampin' Up's um, attempt at digital scrapbooking years ago. And I can tell it's got a date, uh, 2014 on it. So I found this in a drawer somewhere. Um, but I know I had gotten um, several copies printed for like my stamp club. And I guess I ended up with an extra one that, so I wanted to give it away. It's really cool. Thanks, Cindy. I think I saw this recently. I don't know if it was, um, maybe it was on, yeah, these would be good for people across the street, Gail. I can't remember where I saw this basket recently, but I saw it and I remembered, you know what? We made those so long ago. I should bring that back out. And by the way, um, so how I scored this at four and eight, it's just because it is evenly divisible by three. So I have made smaller baskets with this same um, plan, same idea, but you just have to have it divisible by three. So if you wanted to make, you know, this is four by four. If you wanted to make this three by three, you would need a nine by nine piece of paper to start out with and then you would score it at three and six. Rhonda, was it Rhonda Wade? Okay, I thought it was Karen Titus, I can't remember. Um, but this was such an oldie but goodie. All right, so we're gonna tie it like this. All right, see, it is cute. And the tag would really make it. Now for the ribbon, um, I've got this, I, I didn't get the Rococo Rose ribbon, but I had this um, sweet sugar plum that is retired from a whole bunch of years ago and um, it matches quite nicely. So I'm going to fish this through. You could also use a rectangle punch. All right, and fishing it through here. Yeah, the Rococo Rose, um, I said earlier, you know, that cardstock is on back order and um, they're running low. Like, I don't believe that they're gonna order a ton of it again <clears throat> once it comes off back order because, you know, the retired list is coming out next week. All right, now this part is just a little bit of futzing around with it. I need extra because I wanna be able to make a nice tail. 
And I'm not worried that this is like um, not staying like nice and straight and flat because it's just to tie it together. And I'm remembering um, that notepad is in the other room. So once I finish tying this off, I'm gonna have to go grab that. Oh, nice. So see, you just tug it tight and then tie this in a bow at the end. I need all the concentration. Yeah, Marvick. Um, like I said, divisible by three. So if you wanted to use like regular, if you don't have 12 by 12, let's cut this right here. If you don't have 12 by 12, you could make it um, whatever is divisible by three. I think, what is 10 and a half? Is that divided by three? 10.5 divided by three. Three and a half, yeah. So you could use regular eight and a half by 11, cut it down 10 and a half, and score it all at three and a half, three and a half and seven. All right, so just divisible by three. I even made them as small as two by two. So I used a six by six piece of paper, and that's something um, you could use like with some of the designer series papers that you get, like that are in six by six packs. All right, this is kind of looking um, not ideal. I don't like all these points coming in and being a jumbled up mess, but it's gonna work out. All right, so I'm just tying this in a bow. Actually, I'm gonna tie it in a knot first. Why not? Because if someone was to just come and grab the end of it, um, then it would become, it would all come apart. All right, so we'll tie this in a bow. If my fingers would work, Okay, yeah, I like that. And then I would just make a tag and then maybe tie it on with a little bit of Baker's twine um, and have these tails, I'm gonna go like here. All right, so that is cute. And you've got all this room down in here. Um, if I recall correctly, I fit like maybe two bags of candy in here. This is for you, Di? Yeah. <laughs> I think you said candy was um, not your friend right now. Funny. All right, hold on everybody. Let me just run into the other room because I want to get that notepad. it okay and I am actually using one of these myself because I came across my open one um, so this is called notes and fun things I designed this in my digital studio um, and I will wipe the dust off but this is still wrapped in the plastic and uh, created by Tony Tesler 2014 so this was like um, you know how you order stuff on Shutterfly you design things and then you send it off to print um, and then I went back and looked. This was like $13, which I think is why uh, their My Digital Studio did not really take off because their stuff was too expensive. Um, but let me just show you. So I've got mine that I'm using now. Um, I mean, it's the same color, but I just want you to see like, and it's like a soft um, cover, like it feels soft and you know, it's extra. It's got some, it's cardboard. I like it. So let's see, how long is it? It's eight and a half by five. So it's a good size. I think you'll love it. So comment, share, and um, I'm gonna send that, um, or I'm gonna keep that open till Sunday night at nine o'clock. I will do the drawing. And I'll put everybody in a random, um, you know, I'll put it in a random name thing, whatever. So whether you're you're on YouTube or on Facebook watching it later, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so let's bring back what we've done. This was our box and we used four by four pieces. Diane, pick me, pick me. All right, then we've got our cards that we made. These were using three by four pieces of designer series paper. 
And then we've got these cards that were made using the four by five and a quarter. So um, that's that. And you know what? I just realized I didn't really use the hydrangeas at all other than the paper. So I'll have to have another time where I actually get into it with the stamps. Or I may actually make the tag for, for that with the, um, with the hydrangea. Um, so another announcement. Um, so I did my notebook giveaway. That's right. Sunday at nine next week, I'm going to do, um, sand and sea. So I'm going to be using the seashell stuff. Um, and then the last announcement retired list comes out next week. Normally I would do, um, I would sell my retired stuff like at half off. I would offer to my people, um, right away, but I'm doing it different this year. I'm going to do a BOGO event in June. And what that's going to be is you will claim, like I'm going to take pictures and use albums and all my retired stuff. Um, I'm going to put in albums. You claim pictures of the retired stuff that you want and it is at catalog price. So say a stamp set is $20, just to make it easy. Um, a retired one, you would say mine on the picture and claim it to pay for your order. Since it's buy one, get one you pay in the form of making an order with a hostess code that I'll have. So you place your order with the hostess code, then you're essentially getting the retired one for free. Um, and then if you're not local, if you can't stop by and pick it up, um, I'll have to bill you for the shipping um, cause I'll have to get it to you somehow. So I, more details on that later, but I am planning on doing my retired sale on um, Saturday, June 5th. And I'm not going to do it. I know some people are doing it live, like an auction kind of thing, or, you know, we go through items one at a time. I don't want um, to be here for three or four hours doing that. And I don't want you guys to have to sit through watching for three or four hours. So I'm going to use albums. I am going to use my sharing group, stamping and sharing group, because that's where I can post pictures and albums. Um, but I'll just have it. You know, once I open up the albums, you'll just go through and I'm going to try to organize them like by categories. So you can just go through the albums that you're looking for and you would just comment on the pictures of the items that you want and say mine or whatever. I'll have those details later, but that's coming. Um, that'll be June 5th, Saturday, June 5th. And like I said, you'll buy stuff from the new catalog with the hostess code. Um, and I think that's all I have to tell you today. So awesome. Thanks for being here. Um, and again, comment and share, and I am going to put you in the drawing for this notebook. Okay. Thanks for being here again. And I will see you, uh, next week. And I think if Gail gets her paper pumpkin kit in time, she is going to do stuff with those stencils on Sunday. And let me just show you mine because I got mine the other day. Um, but this is how it looks and how it comes. It's got an awesome stamp set. I love these trees. Um, and then a sponge, which this is interesting that it's not rounded. Uh, but look at these cute stencils. They're four by four. So hopefully Gail's will come and she can do some amazing things. And um, I mean, I'll have to do some stuff later with them too. But I love it. I was wondering how this one worked with the uh, the sunburst. So it is like, I'm gonna have to figure out how to keep that down on the paper since it's kind of like all open. Um, but looking forward to that. So tune in um, Sunday with Gail. Fingers crossed that she gets her kit. Okay, now for real, I'm done. All right, thanks you guys, bye.